It's always cool to hear and read uh, scripture with different voices, and that's why we have different readers each week. Mm -hmm. And um, you did a really good job. Amen. So last week we began our series through the book of Jonah. And one of the things that, that, that I said is we're looking at how we can learn about who God is and what God's nature is like. So, so far, we've learned about God's nature that, number one, God knows the real us. He knows the inclination and, and true desires of our heart, yet he still calls to us. He still asks the, the sinners that we are to do his work in this world. The second thing is that we cannot hide from God because he's everywhere and he never leaves us. We uh, learned that the Lord is the one who created everything. Number four, God uses our lives for people to know him. Sometimes that is a scary thought because our lives can be off base many times. But God still uses our lives for people to know him. And the fifth thing that we learned last week is that God offers grace and desires life for people. God offers his people grace and he desires life for people. So I have to ask you this. Why are you here today? Why are you here today? When we come to worship as the body of Christ, do we bring our real selves, the brokenness that we are, and lay it bare before the cross? Or do we put a mask on to try to pretend that we're someone that we're not? Why are you here today? Are we here because this is something that we need to do? Or are we here because we want to get an experience, an encounter with the risen Christ who is with us? Now, there are times that we're going to have many doubts. I don't think doubts are a bad thing. I, sometimes I think doubting Thomas gets, gets, gets a raw end of the deal because Christ still appeared to him. Right? Amen. Through our doubts, we can still experience the presence of Christ. Sometimes we, we go through these seasons of, of, of doubt where we think that God is done with us. We get to a certain point in life or we get to a certain stage mentally or emotionally and we think that God is done with us. But I want you to hear me loud and clear. God is not done with you yet. Amen. No matter where you are in life, no matter what you're going through. God is not done with you yet. And as we go to Scripture, we go off, we have to be careful that we don't go 
just to the scripture that makes us feel good. You know, sometimes we have to read the book of Judges. We have to go through and read the book of Leviticus. We have to read Lamentations, these really difficult books, because we get the full scope of God's nature instead of what makes us feel good. And our favorite verses, I won't even say what they are, because when I list the verse out, you'll probably know what they are. Philippians 4, 6, Philippians 4, 13, John 3, 16, Psalm 23, Jeremiah 29, 11. You already know what these verses are because we go to them all the time because they make us feel good. Right? Amen. Our God is a God of hope, yes. But we have to remember that our God is a God of hope, not just when we feel good, but even when we don't feel like God's presence is around us. The Bible tells us all about the nature of God, and that's why it's important to read it from in the beginning God made to the final amen in Revelation. The Bible tells us the nature of God. And as we read the scripture, we don't go with what we think we know or what we know about the passage. We always try to listen for God at a new layer because there's way more in the scripture than what's printed on the page. And it makes me think about the movie Shrek. So if you've seen the movie Shrek, you know the first one. There's a scene where the donkey and Shrek have already beaten Lord Farquaad's knights and, and his castle, and, and he sent him on the mission. Dudley's laughing because I think he knows this scene. And anyway, donkey and Shrek are, 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 are talking. Well, let me rephrase this. Donkey is talking. Shrek is trying to get the donkey to stop talking. That's like a plot line in the movie. And, 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 um, and donkey is questioning Shrek. Why he didn't do more damage to the castle. Why he didn't do more damage to the knight. Because Shrek is an ogre. This is what ogres are supposed to do. And Shrek looks at Donkey and he says, Donkey. I'm not going to do a Scottish accent. So I'll, I'll stop right there. He says, Donkey, ogres are like onions. And Donkey's like, they smell bad? They make you cry? And he's like, no, 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 no. Onions have layers. Ogres have layers. There is far more beneath the surface every time we scrape or peel a layer off. The same thing is true with Scripture. And that's why I said last week, the main purpose of the book of Jonah, as, I'm, as I see it and as I have studied it for the past several months, is to teach us about who God is. So we know who we are supposed to be. Now we left Jonah off. Well, we left off in, at the end of chapter 1 with Jonah in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. And we said that this was actually a place of grace. Because God did not let Jonah drown. He, he, had a, he commanded this fish to swallow Jonah. He was not in his best circumstances that Jonah was in. And... Um, but Jonah was still alive because God's nature is to offer grace and life. Things go wrong when humans take upon ourselves and go against God. And there's one prayer that's recorded, and it's in chapter 2. Now, whatever situation that you're facing. You may be in it, you may be, you may feel like you are inside the belly of a fish. You may feel like life stinks. You may feel like your your prayers do not go past the shingles of the on the roof, because I'm sure Jonah felt like his prayers did not go past the scales on the fish. But God is not done with you yet. God has more faith in us. God created us for a purpose, and he's constantly pursuing us. And that's why the end of Psalm 23 is, Surely goodness and mercy shall pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We need to pay attention to the grace and mercy and the love that is constantly pursuing us 
even when we are in the pitfalls of life, even when we're in the belly of the fish and we don't think that we can get out, even when our life seems to be ebbing away. Because as the scripture said today, when my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord. It's easy to praise God in the good times. But can you praise God in the belly of the fish? Now, what we're going to learn from chapter 2 is that God answers all prayers. There's four responses to God for answering prayers. One is yes. We like the yes. We will, we will praise God all the time for his yeses. But how many times do we praise God for his second answer? No. Or how about the third answer? Not yet. And the caveat of that, the fourth answer is not yet because you have not done what I told you to do in the first place. Every time I think about that, that one gets me like really hard. God's answer could be not yet because you haven't done what I already told you to do. And unfortunately, that's the state of many people today. We constantly want God to do stuff for us. But oftentimes we forget that the true blessing from God comes when we do God's work in the world. Instead of dwelling upon ourselves. Now, let's look at Jonah's prayer in this scripture today. This is a fantastic prayer, isn't it? In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From, the, from deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help, and you listened to my cry. Verse 9, but I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will make good, and I will say salvation comes from the Lord. The only problem with this prayer is it does not line up with Jonah's character in 1 Kings 14 or in Jonah chapter 1. This prayer does not line up with the character of Jonah that we have read in the text. And we have to be very careful that we don't read anything into the text that is not there. And so it's possible. I'm not saying this is what happened because I'm not reading anything in the text that's not there. It is possible that he's praying this prayer from memory. It's possible that he's probably praying this prayer because it could have been like he thought it was the magic words to get God to get him to get it out of the fish. But, you know what? Even if that's true, God still answered that prayer. Now, how do we know that this was not Jonas, uh, that this prayer was not in alignment with the state of his heart. We have to look at verse 10, the last verse of the chapter. And it says that God commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto the dry land. That is a very strong word. It could have said he spit, he spit Jonah onto dry land. But what happens when we vomit? Why do we vomit? Because something in our stomach is making us sick. So, we have, so our stomach gets it out. Imagine the fish is tired and sick of hearing Jonah's arrogance. So it vomited him out. Notice there's only one prayer that it says. We don't know anything that he has done for three days or three nights beforehand. But after this prayer, the fish was so sick of Jonah... That he vomited him out. He had to get the disease thing out of his stomach. Jonah's prayer may not have been sincere. But the last line, salvation comes from the Lord. Shows that God is going to answer his prayer. God delivered Jonah from the belly of the fish. Not in the way that he would have wanted but he delivered Jonah from the belly of the fish. Matthew 6 says, Ask, seek, and knock. We know this scripture. I hope. It says, If the son asks you for bread, are you going 
to give him a snake. But your heavenly Father, remember, knows how to give good gifts. Yeah. Even when our hearts are not in alignment with our actions, God will still do everything he can to give us good gifts. Sometimes that good gift actually comes in the form of discipline mm -hmm. or uh, being in a place that we won't want to be. But it's still a good gift because we are given the chance for him to develop our character. And we don't have to be in a place where we're going to make the situation sick of us. But we can turn our hearts to God, which makes us have, which makes us have to look at our personal prayer lives. So I'm going to ask you this. When was the last time that you asked someone for help to pray? See, prayer, we have made it individual. We've said, I'm going to say my prayer. Where we don't really want to ask people for help. But we'll even get to the place where we say, that was a beautiful prayer. But the point of prayer is to communicate with God. And learn how to communicate with God so our hearts become aligned with his hearts. So our lives are becoming the person that he has created us to be. And what was the only thing the disciples asked Jesus to teach them? How to pray. Church, I'm going to challenge us this week. We spent seven weeks of prayer in our breakthrough series. But every day this week, I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask that you every day say, God, Teach me how to pray to you. We may be these incredible prayer warriors, and I know that there are some in this church. But as I said about Scripture, there's layers to Scripture. I think God is calling each and every one of us to go even deeper in our prayers than we know. Because when we go deeper in our prayers, we get closer and closer to that throne of grace, to the throne of life. And I'm challenging us to ask God to teach us how to pray. And we have to be very careful to not present ourselves in any manner that is inconsistent with how we feel inside. Just like I asked, why are you here in worship? How do you bring yourself to prayer? Allow the condition and state of our hearts to reflect to God what's really what's going on. So we don't stifle the spirit who Paul says in Romans 8 is groaning to God to pray for us and groans unutterable that we cannot understand what it's saying. But, but, but the point is, is our spirit is praying to God. Let us not stifle the spirit, but instead come to God humbly and say, God, I need your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, help me, a sinner. And then listen. To him. We can't put on false masks. We have to be in a place to confess what we have done wrong to God and have the courage and boldness to go to the people we have sinned against to confess. Because uh, that's in James 5 16. 1 Peter 4 8 says, Love covers a multitude of sins. When we confess, we experience this release. When we truly confess and repent, we experience this release and we have this flood of love coming at us, which is changing us. And that's how it can cover a multitude of sins because we are not who we were when we confessed, but we are becoming who God created us to be. And we don't, we don't try to put on a false mask because God knows our heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7, do not look at the outward appearance. God knows the heart. Jonah may not have really may not have been sincere in this prayer. But God did not forget Jonah. God offered him life and grace in the belly of the fish, and when the fish was getting sick of him, God offered Jonah a chance to get back out into the mission field to do his work by, by having the fish vomit Jonah onto dry land. That is grace. God has not forgotten you. And it doesn't matter what seemingly small stuff we have. We pray to God with a humble heart 
seeking his grace and favor. And we have the chance to renew our commitment to God because he's given us a second, third, fiftieth, thousandth chance to do what he's called us to do. And he has never reneged on his presence with us. Amen. So let our prayer be this. Lord, hear our real prayer. Not what comes out of our mouth, but the prayer of our heart. And then wait and pay attention for God's answer because he will answer. And he wants us to experience his love and grace through his yes, through his no, through his not yet, or through his do what I told you to do first. <laughs> Let us pray. God, in the stillness and quietness of our hearts, we come to you. Teach us to pray. Help us tear off this mask of perfection, of egos, of, of, of pride, of, 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 our, of putting ourselves before other people. And let us come to you with a humble heart. Break our hearts in such a way, Lord, that, that we know that you are still offering grace and you are transforming us. Lord, Hear our prayer. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. During this final hymn, the prayer rails are open. Come forward, take time to confess. If you need prayer, I'll be up here. If you want to bring someone to pray with you, that's fine too. If you want to stay in your pew, sit down and pray as, as, as we sing, that is okay. But let us live what we experience in worship today each and every day this week and make sure that we respond to Christ because his presence is with us, he hears us, he answers our prayers and he has not forgotten you. Amen. Amen.